In the uh, following example, I'll be demonstrating how to, uh, to create this rim transparency whenever you put a light, uh, backlight uh, onto, let's say, a, a skin material or human skin, for example. The, usually the edge will be slightly transparent or translucent, and you'll see a little bit of a, of a rim effect appearing. So let's uh, let's actually use the incident shader to create this uh, this effect because whenever the light is in front of the surface this rim effect does not appear but when it's, when it whenever it's in the back we get actually this rim effect to appear. So the first step here is uh, is to get the actual uh, incident shader and connect it to the surface. So we need to first create this this rim transparency and and the the default uh, uh, incident shader here is quite adequate for this. So we need to use surface to camera, and we need to adjust the bias in the cane such that we have uh, really a rim. We first need to invert it such we have this this uh, rim effect, and we need to increase it just to keep slightly the edge here. So something like this would be quite adequate. Voila. That sounds uh, like a good settings for uh, edge transparency. So if you move the camera and orbit the camera around, you always get this rim. The idea is actually to modulate this uh, this rim effect such that whenever it's uh, it's it's basically lying with the light. The rim effect does not appear, but whenever it's in the back, we actually do see the uh, the effect. So now we have this incident shader that is, uh, let's say, we could call it rim incidence. The next one is to get an actual uh, sh uh, an another incident shader to create this uh, this uh, sense of of. Uh, uh, of transparency whenever it's facing uh, it's facing the, uh, the light or not. So the uh, the mode to use actually is camera to light, and uh, this one, as you can see, it's uh, it's quite simple. So right now I'm I'm, I'm utilizing I'm, I'm positioning the the camera in the same vector, same direction as the light. So the shader will return wide because the camera and the light are aligned. So if I go in the back, I'll get most likely dark uh, dark result. So we we want to take this and basically multiply these two together such that uh, when we're on the back we want to have full rim and when we are on the thumb we want to have no rim. So we need to inverse invert this one right here. So we don't want to have any rim whenever the 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 actual light and the camera are aligned. And we want to have the rim when uh, we are currently, uh, you know, uh, in the opposite direction as the light. So now we have, um, we really have these, uh, this uh, effect. So we could say, camera, light, incidence, and we simply need to actually uh, multiply, use a mat uh, scalar basic to multiply these two values together. So if we say input, we'll connect this one to input 2 and connect this one to the uh, converter right here. Let's open this one and say multiply. So now if we do a render region, we'll get the rim effect to appear in this situation, but whenever we go here, the rim effect will totally disappear. So now we have really, we start to have some translucency that is coming from the light here and where we're in the back, we totally get it. Uh, actually, we may want to actually uh, reduce a little bit the uh, the actual rim transparency right here by taking this uh, camera light incidence and adjust it to minimize the effect. So we may increase it. So now, if we start to lower it like this, voila, S just slightly. So if we go in the back, we still get it. If we go in the front, we don't get anything. Voila. That is pretty good. Now we uh, actually can uh, connect this one directly on Fong. So let's connect Fong back. And uh, let's adjust Fong to have a little bit uh, like of a skin uh, skin type, uh, human skin. Somebody like, uh, something like a skin color. And uh, let's actually lower this and make it a little bit uh, brighter like this. So now we have this uh, this uh, 
very shiny this result here and we need to connect this shader to uh, what we call transparency uh, scale transparency uh, now we can go to the transparency tab and increase the transparency right here to maximum so whenever we hear the transparency does not appear at all but when we go in the back here we start to see some transparency over the edge it is important though after all to adjust the actual uh, the actual uh, uh, rim incidence to be able because if it's set to R it, you won't get any of the transparency edge to uh, to appear right here so you may need to adjust slightly the uh, bias in game from for, uh, from the rim incidence in order to get this this edge uh, effect to appear now the next step here is to actually start to uh, give a sense of of, uh, of uh, underskin uh, scattering or underskin illumination scattering, and uh, one of the, the 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 step to achieve this is by using a, a gradient shader as a volume shader. So the first thing we need to do is actually go take a state scalar. And the state scalar will be using uh, a ray length, and the uh, ray length means that whenever the ray length st scalar state is connected as a uh, as re as a volume shader, it will give the thickness of the volume. So we can actually use that to shade the inner or the volume of the object. So here is uh, uh, how to achieve this effect. You you need first need to get a gradient, and especially a mixer gradient and because you can actually connect the uh, scalar state directly to the gradient input and connect this one directly over the actual volume right here voila uh, that is uh, quite simple uh, now we need to adjust uh, the actual gradient min max in order to get this effect now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, invert the actual results such that I want to see inside the actual volume. Now you see that uh, I start to see this this sort of rim effect with, with the volume. Um, normally we need to adjust the thickness slightly so we may need to say okay up to 5. Okay 5 might be and up to 10. 10 is a little bit uh, too uh, too long. 5 and what about 3? Yeah, three seems to be a good a good setting. So, whenever the the thickness of the uh, of the volume is more like towards zero, it will return a red color. And whenever the actual uh, thickness is more like three, for example, it get more like a yellow color. So now we'll go black and white, and we'll we'll start to uh, emit uh, uh, more like a reddish, like a red color on the edge, and 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 actually it's more like a pink color. So. We need to start to get a little bit of uh, this this uh, pink color that normally skin would scatter throughout the, the 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 surface. So we may actually get the the actual line to be a little bit thicker, for example. Voila. So now we have this this sense of of, of skin scattering. If we go back to front, we will not get it because of uh, obviously because the light, the camera light incidence will knock off the effect whenever we're facing the light. But whenever we're in the back, we'll start to get this this sort of of sin, skin scattering being being shown over the surface of the object. So I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you.